Hey, how's it going everyone? So what am I working on now? I got this 04 Chevy Colorado and it's a 3.5 liter. The customer had it towed in at the end of the day yesterday. We didn't look at it. So this morning I went out to it and started it up. Started right up. Had it running for about a half hour. Checked it for codes. It has a lean code in it. It also has an 02 code in it. That could be because of, because of the lean issue. Um, so I called the owner of the car, of the truck, and I said, uh, you know, tell me what's going on. So he said, uh, it loses power. He goes, sometimes it just shuts off. Okay. He says, but he goes, you could drive it up. He goes, it, it takes forever to get to 40, 50 miles an hour. He says, and then when you do, he goes, it'll slowly start dying out on you. He goes, you know, you'll be doing 40, and then next thing you know, you're doing 30. Next thing you know, you're doing 25, and 20, and so on, and so on, and so on. All right. So I go out there, I start it up, and I take it down my little dead-end street. And sure enough, this thing falls right on its face. So let's just go up the street here and see what, what it's doing. And uh, you can see how much pollen we have going on here. It just rained last night, and now we have pollen all over everything again. I didn't even clean the windshield off. So assuming you could see that. So let's go down the road here. You can see we have an ABS light on, a uh, check engine light on, an airbag light on. So let's go up the road here and see what it does. Whoop. <laughs> it's gotten even worse now. It barely wants to go. I mean, as soon as they go anything more than just lightly touching the throttle, the thing dies out. can't even go any further right now. It's just dying out on its own right now. And let's see. Probably just gonna come to a halt here. Maybe, yes, no, maybe so. Let me pull over on the grass in case I get stuck here. Our shop is only right there. So, pop this thing into neutral. Actually, I'm going to shut it off for a minute. Wow, yeah. It's just shaking and everything else. All right, so what's going on? I think it's starving for fuel is what I think it's doing. This is an 04. It has a fuel filter. So is the fuel filter just that plugged up? It's possible. It's possible. I've seen plugged up fuel filters do some weird stuff. So I'm going to hang out here for a minute, and then I'm going to... Hopefully drive it back to the shop. If I gotta walk, I gotta walk, so be it. Uh, but yeah, it it had lean codes and it had the O2 codes. Uh, it's also got like a cam phaser code, stuff like that. That's not gonna cause this issue. But judging by the fact, I don't even know how many miles are on this thing. Hang on a second. It's gonna show 244,000 miles on it. So it's got quite a bit of miles. I am, I'm confident it's a fuel issue. What I'm going to do is when I get it back to the shop, I'm going to see if this thing has a freighter valve, and then we're going to probably check fuel pressure. Um, but one of the first things I'll, after that is if it doesn't have a Schrader valve, or even if it does, I'm going to probably throw a fuel filter in it and see what that does. I'm pretty confident this is fuel related just because of the way it's acting and how it just dies out. It's just not getting enough fuel to stay running. So, all right, let's hopefully get, get this thing back to the shop. So we're underneath the hood here, and yes, it does have a Schrader valve right down inside there. See that? So I got my gauge hooked up to it, hanging out right here. So now let's start this thing up and let's see what the gauge actually goes to. Computer doing it, that wasn't even me. What was that reading? I can't even see it from here. Sun glare and anything else? That's almost 40. Okay, but what is it on the road? That's the main question. Having 40 now, and plus, I don't even know what the pressure is supposed to be. Let me look up spec. Let's go on the road and see what this thing actually does on the road. 
Now it's supposed to be 50 to 57, and it's just idling here, and it's come down to 35. See, now it's creeping back up, it's pulsating. A plugged fuel filter can do that. So, that's already that fuel pressure is way too low, but is the fuel pump good? The fuel pump might not be. But first place to start on a vehicle that has a replaceable fuel filter is replace the fuel filter. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean the windshield off, I'm gonna tape the gauge to the windshield, and then let's just see what it actually goes to. I could probably just do it in a parking lot, this thing's so bad now. So I'm sitting in the truck, the gauge on the windshield, and you can see it's bouncing between 40 and 45. Of course, from my angle, it looks a little bit different. It looks like it's more like 35 to 40. <laughs> That's the angle I'm sitting at. So I really have no choice but to do this. Look at that, just revving it up. Now that's not under even under a load or anything. So let's move it in. A, I could probably do this right in the parking lot. So let's see. Hang on a second, I gotta maneuver. All right, so let's try going up the driveway here. See how it just falls off? Let me go down my dead end road and be able to make my life a little bit easier. All right, so the sun glare is not very happy today, or it's not making this video very happy, but hopefully you can see that. It's kind of hard for me to do all this at the same time. I will eventually get, you know, a holder for the camera, but look at that, it's down to 15 PSI. Yeah, it's just falling off. So now I'm gonna pull over on the side of the road. I should eventually come back up, because then it's also, what happens is it, it fills the lines with a volume of fuel, and that helps it. So let me turn around here and we'll do it one more time on the way back. All right, so let's try this now and see what happens. Yeah, it's absolutely falling on its face, but it has no fuel pressure. So yeah, that'll explain no power. So from here, we're gonna be putting a fuel filter on first and then we'll see what happens. I'm gonna leave the gauge hooked up. This way I can see what it is right after I change the fuel filter. All right, so we're up in the air with the Colorado, and here's the fuel filter. It has been changed at some point in its life. You gotta squeeze, there's a tab here and a tab on top. You gotta squeeze the two of them. I already, I tried to relieve some of the fuel pressure. Now that's the pressure side into the filter. <laughs> the key is off. Hold on a second, that's a lot. Wow. Let me get a bucket underneath that and put some speedy dry on that. It's actually kind of amazing that I had already relieved some pressure through the um, gauge up top. But we obviously still have a lot of back pressure in this thing. So always be careful if you're changing a fuel filter or anything. It should eventually die down. The air it is. Hmm, interesting. I think this is a, no, this is not a returnless system. It does have a return. That's the return right there. Can't wait to get this thing off and try to blow through. It's probably plugged solid. All right, I'm going to do the same on the other side, and then this filter actually just slides out this way. See that? It's actually got a locking tab there, but the locking tab's not holding anything anymore. So let me do the same on the other side and get this filter out. Both lines are disconnected, and it should just push out. All right. Ugh. That's pretty nasty. Doesn't mean it's plugged, though. Yeah, hang on a second. And it actually is not plugged, and it'll blow through it. You just heard that, and I'm able to blow through it. I mean, it's got it's it's plugged up a little bit, but it's not plugged up enough to do what it's doing. And the only other thing is, the only other thing that could be besides a fuel pump, just in case, this thing, since it has a return line, it has a fuel pressure regulator on the rail. If the fuel pressure regulator on the rail is no good, and it's allowing excess fuel pressure to rush back to the tank, that could cause that. So what you've got to do in a situation like that is block the return line. If you block the return line, now you got good fuel pressure. The problem is the regulator. So I'm gonna put this fuel filter in it anyway, and then we're gonna see if I, how I can go about doing that. That end of the line is in place. 
putting this end of the line in place. Make sure when you're doing this that you know that the line is secure. Did you hear that click? It just clicked in place, meaning it locked. But always try tugging on the lines, make sure that they are in place. If you have to, push them in and out a few times, holding the filter in place, just to make sure they're locked, because you don't want that thing blowing off when you're driving. All right, so now with the filter in, I'm gonna cycle the key a couple of times. It built up some fuel pressure. I didn't block the return line yet. I want this thing to build up some pressure. I got a funny feeling it's a bad pump, because it's not building up anything. But I mean, it could be a bad regulator too. Just strange, I got just about absolutely nothing. Yeah, maybe the pump completely died out. It's always a possibility. I mean, we have absolutely nothing. I'm gonna pull the return line off, see if I got anything coming out. What do I got to lose at this point? With that being the return line, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it off. And since this is a male on this end, if, let's say, I get fuel pouring out of it, which is possible, well, let's say I get fuel pouring out of it, then I'm going to put a piece of uh, fuel hose over it, like with a with a bolt in the back end of it, you know, like to block it. Just, you know, a blocker, that's all. Um, even if I have a, um, a cap, like a rubber cap designed for, like, coolant or something like that, uh, that would be heavy enough to withstand it. I would put that over it with a clamp just to like lock it in place. So let me get that off and then let's try cycling the key and see if we got anything. And I'm going to say no because I had absolutely nothing come out of it. So, but let's go up top and let's take the, uh, but, uh, let's crank it over and see what happens. Now with the fuel line disconnected, we're going to come up here and we're going to try cranking it again. I don't hear anything underneath it. Should have had something. And I got nothing on the floor. Bad fuel pump. Okay. All right. Is what it is. You're gonna have to get a fuel pump coming for it. So we're back up in the air. We're gonna drop the tank on this thing. So I'm gonna have to undo the fuel lines and stuff like that. I'm not gonna go through the entire process of that because it's gonna wind up being too long of a video. Uh, I gotta undo that coupler there for the um, emission system and what else these are a little bit of a pain I think I got to take this inner wheel well out so I can get to the fuel filler neck if I'm not mistaken uh, and of course I don't recall how much fuel is in this thing we got a broken strap it's supposed to be over there but these tanks you got to bring them back back that way to get this part down and then drop the whole thing down and out all right let's get going with that if I run across anything that I think you should see, I'll cover that. Oh, uh, make your life easier to pull the drive shaft out too. This way you just have the room on this side. Trust me, it just makes your life much easier. All right, so the fuel pump is done. I had the battery on charge. I'm just gonna unhook the charger. Hook the positive post up. Just loose fit right for right at the moment. <clears throat> Let's see if we have fuel pressure. Oh, there we go. Some vehicles take a while to purge out any air that's in the system. Look at that. Uh, that's pretty decent fuel pressure. All right, so let's tighten up that battery cable and let's take this thing for a ride. I'm gonna clean off the windshield so I can tape the gauge of the windshield. I just wiped the windshield off. That's all pollen. I mean, it's insane how much pollen we have around here. It's just nuts. All right, let me tape this up on the windshield. So I'm on my little dead end side road here and there you can roughly see where fuel pressure is so let's go down the street and see what happens i remember before the fuel pressure would just die off so there we go it's accelerating no problem it's maintaining fuel pressure so we're 
we're good. I'm happy with that. So, that is a fix. So I'm good with that. I'm happy with that. Now I can give the car back. Actually, I can't give the car back to the customer. I gotta fix this window. The uh, regulator, he was having issues with it, so I had taken it apart, or taken part of it apart. I put the panel back on it, but um, I have a regulator here. I'm just gonna put it in. Uh, I don't know. Should I make a video on that? Maybe I will. All right, uh, but yeah, so. And it runs perfect now. Before it would just fall on its face. So I'm good with that. So hopefully you got something out of that. It was just interesting that after I changed the fuel filter, it just completely died out. But you know, weird things happen in this industry. This is part of the game. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so hopefully you got something out of that. If you did, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys, have a great day. Keep crunching.